지구촌 곳곳에서 발생하는 전쟁. 전쟁은 결국 빈곤을 만들고 연약한 여성과 아이들은 더 이상 안전을 보장받을 수 없습니다. 하지만 이미 가난하고 취약한 많은 사람들이 폭력과 범죄에 노출되어 있고 심지어 인신매매와 노예로 끌려가는 가혹한 현실 속에 이들을 어둠 속에서 구출해내고 있는 NGO 대표 게리 하우겐을 더 미션에서 만났습니다. We have to start making stopping violence indispensable to the fight against poverty. In fact, any conversation about global poverty that doesn't include the problem of violence must be deemed not serious. Modern day slavery and international justice mission is now the largest anti slavery organization in the world. It might help to get some picture of what modern day slavery actually looks like. Many of us will picture that there are lots of people held in slavery in the commercial sex industry. But in addition to commercial sexual slavery, You also have forced labor in the fishing industry or in brick factories or in rice mills or other manufacturing. They have actually been trafficked, are held there against their will and by threats of violence. And this is modern day slavery that's taking place right in our own communities and around the world. Yeah, conflict uh, has a terrible impact in displacing Uh, civilian population, so they have to leave their homes and put them in a place of desperate need. And then as a result, they are more vulnerable to traffickers and slavers who will um, offer them some promise of a job or opportunity or shelter and then abuse them in slavery. So whatever circumstances increase the vulnerability of the poor to Uh, be taken advantage of will increase slavery. And so conflict around the world devastates civilian populations and makes them much, much vulnerable to the schemes of the traffickers. Well, I can remember so many stories, but I think about a 16-year-old girl that IJM was able to help rescue out of a very dark place in the Philippines where she was held in a room, locked in a room, and she was being sexually abused in front of a webcam every day for customers around the world who are paying in order to direct that abuse. She had been orphaned as a little girl when she was just about 11 years old and over time had fallen into the hands of traffickers then sold her to the big city where she found herself in this dungeon of abuse. And she used to cry out to just scream when she heard a police siren go by because she wanted the police to know that she was in there, but no one ever heard her. She just collapsed on the floor in the bathroom, just started weeping, and she prayed to God, God, if you exist, please get me out of here. And the very next night, International Justice Mission arrived with the authorities to bring her out. And that young girl was able to find the love of Christ, to find restoration. Her abusers were brought to justice. And now 
She is standing in front of 5,000 leaders here at Lausanne to share her testimony. The rescue from slavery is just the beginning of the journey. It's not the end. Because anyone who's been forced into a life of slavery has a tremendous road of recovery they must journey on. And in most of our rescues from slavery, we actually have to have them all go through a two-year freedom school to actually even know how to live now in freedom. Because you just don't go from having once been a slave to then all your uh, problems are solved. So if they're not provided with tremendously high quality aftercare, the odds are very high that they will be victimized again. That's why I emphasized the, the solution for, for ending slavery is great law enforcement, but also great services for survivors. Yes, I've had that question a lot. I questioned that a lot when I would see a, a child curled up in a fetal position because she had been subjected to so much sexual assault and violence. And I don't have an easy answer for why God would allow this. So I, I start with, I don't know why. But then I do know that there is a God who was willing to come and share in the suffering with us, because that's what Jesus did. He came and stretched himself out on a cross and bore that same kind of violence and injustice and abuse. So at least I know he knows what this is like and he weeps for it. And I also know that I've been given a choice as to whether or not I will respond with love to this suffering and hurt or whether I will not. And that wouldn't be a choice if there was no suffering. And so it seems that love requires the ability to choose for it to be real and authentic. And so it seems that the world in this deep mystery is giving us a choice to either hurt people or to help people. And especially for people who are vulnerable, you can be tempted to exploit them or abuse them, or you can love and care for them. That's the world that we are in, where there's a war between cruelty and generosity, between violence and love. And I don't understand the deep mystery of this world that God has made, but I have seen that He is Himself a God of love, that He Himself has come to share this painful fallen world, and He's given us the invitation then to show His love and His mercy in that world. I think the, the best way is to partner with us in providing this bold witness for Christ in the most desperate places in the world where people are suffering from violence and slavery. The places where it's hardest to believe that God is good because they're suffering such abuse and such hurt. And we want to work with the body of Christ here in Korea to provide that bold witness in those hard places. But it doesn't mean that everyone in Korean churches needs to go to those places. They just need to support the Christians who are already there. And as the church, we just need to tell the story that there are these needs in the world. These are the ways in which the body of Christ here in Korea can be part of God's work in the most desperate places. Um, we had a very inspiring meeting with the new chair of the uh, Commission for Human Rights here in uh, Korea. And what I shared with them is that the Asia Pacific region continues to look to Korea for leadership in the region. Uh, Korea is a place of such economic success in the world. It's a, a place of in, uh, growing leadership and influence. 
but it's also true that there's difficult struggles in the region with human rights, with slavery, with um, abuse of children. And so the region is increasingly looking to uh, the Republic of Korea for leadership in these areas. I think the dream is that followers of Jesus would be famous in the world for their compassion and their courage. But what I can dream about is what Christ dreamt about, that his followers would be the salt and the light of the world. Let your light so shine among men that they'll see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Jesus was called the light of the world, and he calls us, his people, the light of the world. That would be my dream, is for the followers of Jesus in our world to actually live out that calling.